Two Bends is sponsored by Paul Ceremi Auto Group, the cheaper dealer. What are you doing? The seats move. The seats move in every car. But not every car comes with lifetime maintenance. Ah, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Hey, check this out. This is a uh, Paul Ceramy 2016 Ford Flex SEL bench thread. And man, oh man, is it awesome. Seats move and everything. Paul Ceramy, the cheaper dealer. Every new and pre-owned vehicle comes with lifetime maintenance. Lifetime maintenance! This must be awkward for the viewers! What are you wearing? What is this? Oh, you don't, you don't like it? What is it? It's my ascot for the, uh, it's Jeff Fisher day. Jeff oh. Fisher, former Rams coach, did one of the greatest coaching quotes of all time. You're questioning our effort. You can kiss my ascot. I don't think that's what he said. Is that no, what he said? No, he said he was promoting you the ascot. Uh, he's a big ascot guy. He's a big ascot. And now he's out of a job, so we'll have even more time to focus on his ascot. <laughs> Jeff Fisher, people, no longer the coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Man. I feel, uh, I mean, obviously, we realized Jeff Fisher needed to be fired a long time ago, but uh, I'm a little disappointed, I'll be honest. I was really hoping that he would lose Thursday to Seattle, and uh, he'd become the all-time losingest coach right, in NFL history. Right, right. Instead, 165 losses, he's tied with Dan Reeves. Which stinks because Dan Reeves was actually a good coach. I mean, Fisher, to be fair, had a couple good years, don't get me wrong, uh, in Tennessee. But Dan Reeves, I mean, he went to the Super Bowl with... Four times! Four times, two different teams. Uh, for him to be labeled as the losingest coach, it's kind of frustrating. So I think you and I both were hoping that Jeff Fisher, uh, one of the hated guys here in St. Louis for basically being the symbol of, of why the Rams are so inept on the field, uh, continued to coach the Rams after all those years. He was one loss away. And he was probably going to get it. They're playing a pretty good Seattle team on Thursday night football. Instead, fired. People say, "Why do you? Why do you have? Uh, why do you have so much distaste for Jeff Fisher? He didn't move the team." And I said, "Okay, I know he didn't move the team. Stan Kroenke moved the team. This team will continue to be despised probably by a lot of people in St. Louis as long as Stan Kroenke is the owner. But Jeff Fisher, he's what I like to call the uh, the smug face of indifference, oh. the mustachioed man who always told us that he was going to get it fixed." who never would allow anyone to question the team's effort when they tanked underneath him. They could kiss made, your ascot, who made, his ascot. Who made countless, countless bad draft picks and personnel decisions. I mean, this is a guy who, who traded for um, Nick Foles and then signed him to an extension right. before he even took a snap. Right. And, uh, I mean, and, and the people say, well, he's only the coach. He doesn't make those decisions. No, he does make those decisions. The whole point of Jeff Fisher was that he was the man who made the decisions. Right. Les Snead was kind of along for the ride, the general manager. And now uh, and now Jeff Fisher is no more. It kind of made me want to remember my favorite Jeff Fisher memories, if you will. Kiss my ascot. It's got to be up there. Um, a lot of them have come from this season with this <laughs> team kind of unraveling out in L.A. What about his we're not going 7-9 and nine speech? Right, on reality TV. Knocks. We're not going Seven and nine, like you're right. You're probably gonna end up five and eleven if you if they didn't lose your job. Four and eight right now. They've lost four in a row and eight of their last nine. Uh, I also I know you were a big fan of when he came out with the backwards hat. Oh my God! Well, that was last season, the final season uh, with the Rams, and you know it was raining. We we're all up in Seattle covering the game, and he decided to just kick it old school. He flipped his hat back, kind of like uh, Sylvester Stallone, and over the top, it's like a switch. <laughs> And uh, they actually won that game. They, they beat Seattle in that game. And uh, he came to the post-game press conference with the backwards hat. I feel like if you're, tw I think age 25, two things happen. Uh, you're allowed to legally rent a car. Yes. And you can no longer wear a backwards hat. Correct. 25 and, and old. Unless you're a yachty or a catcher yes. wearing it for work purposes. Yeah. Uh, and there was Jeff Fisher with the backwards hat. I always thought that was silly. What about when? What about just the excuses? I mean, the kind of excuses this guy could come up with—they were truly, they were truly remarkable. I mean, yeah. from from blaming that this season on uh, on on Stedman Bailey and Trey Mason, guys yeah. who had terrible terrible um, events in their lives, but were not necessarily marquee players on the team, to to telling us the relocation was not going to be a distraction at all for the Rams. Right. When the right, Rams right. were in St. Louis, and then changing it to. Right, uh, right. And then changing it to to why it's the reason they're losing when they got to Los Angeles. I mean, I'll never forget one time when we were out there at, at Rams Park covering a practice. 
and the the media relations crew took us through this room to get to the practice field. Okay. And uh, there was this samurai sword in the in the meeting room. For they're playing for everyone to see. It turns out it was like a special thing they did with their special teams. Like mm -hmm. if somebody did a great job on special teams, they got the samurai sword for the week or something. I don't know what the details are. I asked Coach Fisher about it. Sure. I mean, this is when they were losing. I was trying to find something you know unique and quirky, positive yeah, to write yeah, about, right? Yeah. He went off on me, like, and then he like started yelling at the PR people, like, "Why do we let? Why did they let us see that?" It's like it's a, it's just a samurai sword. Right, like, what right, could right, possibly right. be such a big deal about this? Yep. And uh, no, you would have thought I went in and dug up his coaching plan. It was truly, <laughs> it was truly remarkable, man. And uh, that will never, that'll be something I never forget about Fisher. Just the the state secrets that he that he would have fought with for his life. That apparently didn't even help the team win any games. And lastly, and by the way, good good driving etiquette here, pulling over <laughs> to the side. Um, lastly, let's talk about the game this season. We had a challenge a call, but didn't have the challenge flag. Oh my God! How <laughs> he could have used his ascot. Yeah. Hey. It was unbelievable. Uh, he goes, challenge! He goes, excuse me, I'd like to challenge a play. <laughs> That's fine, Coach Fisher. Just throw your challenge flag, flag onto, the, onto the field. Unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. unbelievable. Well, Jeff Fisher, um, good riddance. Uh, I mean, you had some good years, don't get me wrong. We went to a Super Bowl. It's not cetera. here. Why We're related to St. Louis or the Rams at all. Right, right, Correct, right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Uh, in honor of Jeff Fisher, I will throw the challenge flag. I thought I was going to stick on the thing. <laughs>